in your text above, the transformers occur when you are dealing with uh, AC circuits, and I guess there's a rationale for that. Um, for me, I felt like uh, transformers are naturally tied with uh, coverage of mutual inductance. So that's uh, how you see it covered in lecture. Sometimes you can think of inductors as a special case of a transformer where the, th the current change that's inducing voltage and the object where voltage is induced, it's all the same object. Um, now, so you will see the transformer lecture here. And I guess uh, in the end, what's uh, important uh, for the purpose of this question is the transformer equation, which is so intuitive that you could almost guess it. So let me, uh, well, let me write down a version that I'll claim is what I'm guessing. <laughs> Although I'm probably, have it's a good portion of memorized version. So uh, this is what you could call transformer formula. So you have a primary winding of N1 on which you apply voltage of V1. And you have a secondary winding of N2 on which you are hoping to get voltage V2. Uh, you can swap these to what's input, what's output. This is a relationship thing. And when you write this all down, um, the relationship that ends up being true, I think, is the, the ratio of the windings determine the ratio of the voltages. Let me make sure it makes sense. So if N2 is greater than N1, then V2 should be greater than V2, yeah. yeah. So this is the transformer formula. So I can use this to answer most of it. There might be some parts where I have to invoke other rules like Ohm's law. So let's read, or conservation of energy. So let's read through that and see. So a step-up transformer is designed so that the output of its secondary winding, and so they are giving us what V2 should be, 2200 volt RMS. As long as it's the same, I don't really care. Um, I would do pay more attention and be careful if they're talking about peak to peak and peak voltages here. So when the primary winding is connected to that, okay, so we are given both the voltages, 110 volts. Um, if there are 85 turns in the primary winding, uh, how many turns in the secondary winding? Okay, so I can imagine solving this for N2, and when I do that, doing that quickly in my head, <laughs> it becomes uh, N1 times V2 over V1. So let me do that in my calculator quickly. N1, uh, 85 divided by, or times, V2, 2200 divided by 110. So the number of turns should be, yeah, 1700, I guess that's right. Oh, yeah, 1700. <laughs> and um, ah, if a register connected across the secondary winding throws an RMS current of this, what is the current in the primary winding? So that's another thing to watch out for. So uh, I think we can get the uh, uh, volt. Uh, since uh, we know the current in, uh, in the secondary winding, we can um, hear the primary consideration is conservation of energy. Because it, it uh, um, I mean, th there might be other reasoning processes that you could go through, like Faraday's law and all that good stuff. And all of that will turn out to be um, kind of a lot of work. Uh, one thing though about some of the laws of physics you learned in physics 4A is that they continue to apply in physics 4B. So the idea of conservation of energy, it continues to apply. So here, the idea that we are going with is the power that's coming into your transformer, that must somehow be equal power that's coming out of the transformer. So for the power that's coming out of the transformer, uh, you've given enough quantities to compute both of uh, compute it because power in an electric circuit, it generally you can describe as current times of voltage. You have voltage, you were just given the current. So my power output is my current 0.75 ampere times the voltage. That's equal to that, 2200 volts. On the input side is where 
I know one of the quantities. I know my V1, but I don't know my current I1. So it's a simple matter of, hey, this thing is equal to that thing. I have one unknown. Let's solve for that. So my I1 is equal to this quantity, I2 V2 over V1. That's it. That will give you your answer. Let me do that in my calculator. Um, 0 0.75 ampere times the voltage there, 2200, divided by the voltage at the input end. Then you get the current of 15 ampere. It's pretty high. Um, it's, uh, so this uh, is probably running at kind of the limit of the line voltage, whatever this thing is. So, you know, something less than one ampere it doesn't sound like a lot, but in terms of energy, because of a higher voltage, it is a lot. So you need a larger current to pro pro uh, provide that input of energy to have that uh, going on. So, so yeah, that's it. That's uh, all the questions.